In the house of the large winged disc of Edfu, there is also room for all the other gods. But here, Horus is the grandest among them. He is the lord of the house. In 32 before the Common Era, Alexander the Great takes over Egypt from the Persian rule. A new age is ushered in, Hellenism. The new capital, Alexandria, is founded. Alexander is convinced of his godly origin. ascended the steps 
I have approached the boat with the name Bearer of Beauty, so as to see the gourd in his barge, with my hands clean, my feet flawless, and my whole body consecrated. I have pulled the cord away to approach the shrine. I opened the wing of the door at the horizon of Ray, so as to banish the darkness from the sun disk which is inside. I have undone the seal so as to hold high the living eye for his lord. I am Tot, who brings the brilliant eye to his lord, and makes horror satisfied. You radiate on earth just like you appear in the sky and your radiant light besprinkles the entire world. The gods revive and praise your beauty. I have beheld the gold. The powerful one is beholding me. The god rejoices at the sight of me. As soon as I behold the statue of the godly winged scarab, the sublime figure of the falcon of gold. Awake well and in peace. Awake, Horus Behedeti, with life. May both your living eyes, sun and moon, awake in peace. Send out fire and banish the dark. May your eyebrows, which make your face cheerful and know no anger, awake in peace. May your nose, the nest of the air with which you breathe, awake, awake in, in peace. peace. May your lips, the two door leaves of heaven, which you open so that the land lives, awake in peace. May your tongue, which speaks life time and again, which speaks fair judgments, awake in peace. May both your wings of Behedeti, with which you fly above the sky, Goddess Newt, awake in peace. May your body awake in peace. With all that is in it. That, that is, is the, the sky, sky studded, studded with, with its stars. stars. I have come to you, great falcon, as Ray is now descending in the west, and I am equipped with everything needed to protect your house, your bedchamber, and your residence. I ignite the torches and surround your house with the magnificent tutelary goddesses of Ray and Osiris. 
I decorate your forehead with a band of king's linen with magic images. I twine golden charms around your neck and a carnelian chain on your breast. A falcon, a genet, and a faience lion watch over you. I complete your amulets with eyes and green pearls made of gemstone. I paint an ujat eye on the ground so that your majesty can sleep in his interior. I summon the gods who provide you protection so they ensure the security of your house until daybreak. I give you, O King, that all countries are under your control through the devotion felt by the hearts of their inhabitants. I give you that the rebels fall beneath the soles of your feet and insurgents are slashed by your knife. I give you that your club comes crashing down on the heads of the Nine Bow people. I give you the power to kill your enemies, and I make your arm strong against your adversaries. I give you that South and North hail you, West and East bow down before you. The foreigners have been cut down. The Atiyu intimidated, and the Libyans driven away from your chamber. The Bedouins, Manichiu, and Shatiu will be butchered once they have been seized by their shocks of hair. Rejoice, Horus of the Horus Gauls, on the throne of Edfu. Your adversaries were felled by your knife. O oh, kingly lord of might! Your oar 
has seized his bones. I have seen your lance in his body. Your horn has done solid work on his bones. the meat of his neck. Why the spot tree? Yes, a gruesome family history. And that among gods? Why should things be different among gods? Like in many dynasties, no less was at stake than the family inheritance. Of course, attempts at conciliation were made, and judgments of the courts were even made before Rey, the ruler of the universe. But sometimes the privilege and the power were awarded to the one, then to the other. Things endlessly went back and forth. A large festival of drunkenness. Very early in the morning, Edfu is inundated with all good things. With millions and millions of marvelous things, bread and beer abound in unlimited quantities. There are countless bulls and fowl, which make the altars festive. Fattened up geese, as burnt offerings, myrrh, incense and chrism on the embers, which makes it impossible to see the sky above Edfu. The ground is saturated with the green isle of Horus, with the wine from Shafid and Imet. The inhabitants of Dendera join those of Edfu. Drunken from the wine, anointed with Tushipa's oil, and decorated with garlands around their necks. You alone, beloved, are unparalleled, more beautiful than any other woman. You are as brilliant as the rising star which announces the new year. You splendidly virtuous, shiny-skinned one, whose eyes are clear, whose lips speak sweetly, ushering not a word too many. With a tall stature and shimmering breast, your hair is a real lapis lazuli. Your arms surpass gold. Your fingers are like lotus gold. My beloved, my lotus flower, I come to you. It is delightful to go to the river. My wish is to go into the water and bathe in front of you. I will let you see my beauty in a shirt of finest linen, imbued with balsam oil and my hair woven into braids. Beloved, behold me.
The king's priest and the summer priests have arrived in their festive garments. Horace and Hathor present themselves in their procession box for their departing on a journey together. At the harbour the priests and honorees board the ships and the crews stand ready at the oars, hoist the sails. The journey up the Nile begins. The ship's procession is approaching its destination. Behedet, the godly site of the Gnome of Ethel. Over there, on the edge of the desert, the holy place, where the godly ancestors of the temple are entombed. Osiris, the Enyet, the deceased children of Ray. Perform the ritual. Tread on fish. Let the grey geese take flight. To the south, the north, the west, the east. Drive the calves onto the threshing floor. Tread on the grave of my father Osiris. Father, first of the West, Lord of the Dead. This is the chamber of Isis, my mother, who takes you into her arms, who embraces you and joins your head, who joins together your limbs in bands, for your body was fragmented and scattered in all countries. I make my offering on your grave, underneath the holy tree, and bring wine to your car. The god of the primeval ocean has stopped raging. The Nile rejoices and smoothens out its waves. The animals of the water and the crocodiles are quiet and peaceful. The temple of Edfu, site of pleasant life, stretches out its arms to receive you again, Horus. And your face is cheerful at the sight of it.
Have awe of Horus Behedeti, the great god and lord of the horizon. Have awe of Horus, you gods in heaven, for he is the perfect sun disk. Have awe of Horus, you gods on earth, for he is your king. Have awe of Horus, you gods in the underworld, for he is your sovereign. Have awe of Horus, you men and women, for he takes care of you. Have awe of Horus, you foreigners in general, for he is the one who wards off the enemy. Have awe of Horus. Livestock small and large, for he is the Radiant One, the sight of whose rays one lives on. Have awe of Horus, you birds and fish, for he is the one who floods the riverbank, who gives the air of life to all the living. Have awe of Horus, you plants in the field, for he is the flood of the Nile, in the form of the thrustful bull. Have awe of Horus, all of you. For he is the primeval father who spat out, thus bringing you to life.